funeral of the drunken tailor. Our rabbis teach us that the first holy temple was destroyed because the Jews of that time were guilty of the three cardinal sins, idol worship, the spilling of blood, and sexual immorality. And what about the second Beit HaMikdash? Why did it fall to the Romans? Because the Yidin hated each other without reason. And so, our sages conclude, senseless hatred is as terrible as the three worst sins in the world. Why do we hate other people? Because we think we know everything about them, who they are, why they do what they do. Parents think, these are my children, so I know what's going on with them. But sadly enough, much of the time, we're totally wrong. We so misjudge each other. That's why the Torah says that if we hate people, or even if we're only angry, we have to try to find a way to tell them, to talk to them about it. Because really, it might only be a misunderstanding. Sometimes we meet people who seem to us a little bit crude, a little bit impure, certainly not holy. So we want to knock them off. But the truth is we have no idea what a yeddah might be doing when we're not looking. So the holy Baal Shem Tov tells us that even when we see others doing wrong, we have to believe that in the inside of their insides, they're really the holiest of holy and deserving of the greatest miracles. Everybody is created in God's image. What does this mean? That just as God is so deep, so hidden, just as we can't see God, so too we can't really know what's going on in the depths of other people. And unless we love them with all our hearts, we will never know. So we have to remember, don't ever judge, because you never know. The Funeral of the Drunken Tailor 200 years ago, in the city of Koritz, all the Jews were good, God-fearing Yidden. They all kept Shabbos and ate only kosher food. They all davened three times a day. All that is, except one, the tailor, the Schneider. Avramula never went to the synagogue or to buy kosher meat. He never joined the Jews of Koritz in their community gatherings. The only place people ever saw him was in the local Kretschmer, late at night, drunk. So Avramula was a total outcast. Okay, if people's clothes were torn, they had to go to him. After all, he was the only tailor in town. But other than that, nobody ever spoke to him, and nobody cared about him at all. Now the rabbi of Koritz at that time was Rabbi Pinchas Shapiro, one of the three greatest students of the Holy Baal Shem Tov. One day, after the morning prayers, Rabbi Pinchas saw a crowd of people had gathered in a corner of the shore. The Shamus was trying to get a minion together for something, but nobody wanted to join. Red Pinchas hurried over. What's all this commotion? What's going on here? The Shamus looked embarrassed. It's nothing, Rebbe. Don't bother yourself about it. But Rebbe Pinchas insisted. Tell me. I want to know. Well, it's just that the most disgusting Jew in the city, really the lowest of the low, died today. 
and nobody wants to go to the funeral. Rabbi Pinchas stared at the Shamus. I didn't know there were any disgusting Jews in Koretz, he said coldly. Just who in our city is considered so unworthy that no one will do the mitzvah of accompanying him to his final resting place? So the Shamus told him, Avramele the Schneider, the tailor. Reb Pinchas, Rabbi Pinchas turned very pale. The people around him were afraid he might faint on the spot. To everybody's amazement he started crying. Mamash, from the deepest depths of his heart. I can't believe it, he sobbed. Gewalt, gewalt, my dearest friend the tailor has left the world. What time is his levaya? I, for one, will certainly be there. Word quickly spread throughout Koretz that the holy Reb Pinchas was going, Rabbi Pinchas was going to the funeral of Avramele the Schneider. Now everybody knew that the Rebbe never went to a funeral unless it was for a tzaddik, a holy man. So all the Jews of the city jumped to the conclusion that Avramele hadn't been just a tailor. He had been a Lamed Vav Tzaddik, one of the 36 hidden holy people. And suddenly everybody wanted to go to his funeral. So all the Yidden of Koritz turned out for Avramele's Levaya. Everybody was yelling and praying, Taylor, please forgive us for the way we talked about you. We didn't know you were so holy. Schneider, please bless us. All the mothers were begging. Holy of Remele, please pray for our children. Please bless my daughter Malka to get married. Don't forget my daughter Sarah, she needs a good husband. Everyone was crying. Rabbi Pinchas walked right behind the casket with big tears rolling down his holy cheeks. And you know, the rabbis tell us that if you want to know how important a person is in heaven, look at his funeral. The funeral of Avramele the tailor was Mamash Agavalt. Now on that particular day, the rabbi, Rabbi, rabbi Yeva, also a top student of the holy Baal Shem Tov, happened to be in Koritz visiting his good friend Rabbi Pinchas, and of course, he also went to the funeral. He watched the whole scene quietly, not saying a word. But after the funeral was over, he went up to Rabbi Pinchas and said, Rabbi Pinchas, oh my dear friend, what's going on here? Maybe you can fool the whole city into thinking that the tailor was holy, but you and I know better. He was really just what he seemed, a simple Jew, maybe even a little bit sinful. So tell me the truth. Why did you mourn him so much? What did he do to deserve such a funeral? Ah, Rabbi Yeva, Rabbi Pinchas sighed. Really, we know so little about other people. Let me tell you the story. Do you remember the orphan girl, Begele, who grew up in my house? My wife and I adopted her when she was only a baby and took care of her like she was our own daughter. Well, six months ago she turned 14 and was ready to get married. So we arranged a match for her with another orphan, a good boy, the sweetest of the sweet, from a nearby city. And we borrowed money from every single person we know to make her a beautiful chuppah. The wedding was a few weeks ago, and just minutes before the ceremony was supposed to start, Begley's groom came running up to me and said, Rebbe, there's something you forgot. You didn't buy me a new talus, a new prayer shawl. Because, you know, it's the custom for the bride to give the groom a new prayer shawl. I said, Oi, Eli, you're right. But please have mercy. I just can't get you a new prayer shawl right now. A talus costs 10 rubles 
and not only don't I have a single penny left, I don't even know anybody I can borrow the money from. Let me get it for you in a few weeks. But Ellie was in a mush crying. Rebbe, he begged, everybody will, will laugh at me if I don't have a new talent. Again, I knew he was right, and he had nobody else in the world but me. How could I refuse him? So I said, OK, Ellie, I'll do my best. Wait here. Maybe God will open the gates for me. I started walking down the street, trying to think of someone, anyone, from whom I could get the money for Ellie's talus. I didn't know where to go or what to do, so I decided that I'd just go up to the first house with a light on and ask for the money. Soon afterwards I saw a, a light in a window, so I just went right up to the house and knocked on the door. and. It was the tailor's house. When Avremela opened the door and saw me standing there, his face lit up with joy. Rebbe, he stammered, I never dreamed you'd come to visit me. It's such an honour. I know I don't deserve it. Thank you for coming. You know I love you so much. I would do anything for you. Gewalt, he made me feel so good. Sweet Taylor, I said, you know the orphan Fegla is getting married tonight, and I need ten rubles to buy a new prayer shawl for her groom. The tailor's face fell. Oh, Rebbe, he almost whispered, I wish I could help you, but you know, you know how poor I am. And I did know. Then he said slowly, But I think I could give you one ruble. I smiled at him. Schneider, I said, Thank you so much for whatever you can do. May the Master of the World bless you with everything. The tailor gave me the one ruble, and I left. I still didn't know where to get the rest of the money, but somehow I felt lighter. I had so much more hope. I was walking slowly down the street wondering where else to go, when suddenly I heard someone running after me. I stopped and waited. It was the tailor. And as he came up beside me I saw that he was mamash crying like his heart was broken. Avramale. I exclaimed. What hurts you so much? How can I help you? Rebbe, he sobbed. God knows how poor I am. But from time to time I've managed to save a few pennies and now I have exactly nine rubles left. Holy Master, it's my whole life savings. But if I gave it all to you, if I gave you all of my money now, do you think and he started crying so hard he could hardly speak. Do you think that I might, that maybe I could have a place in the coming world? I put my hands on Avramala's head and I said, Holy Taylor, I know how poor you are. I really do. But Fegler is waiting. Her groom Ellie is waiting. For them every minute is an eternity. If you do this great mitzvah and give all your money to me now, it will be because of you that their wedding will take place. And I swear to you, by the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, by the God of our poor holy mothers, that you will have a place in the world to come. And so Rabbi, Pin Rabbi Pinchas told Rabbi Yaiva, I went to Avramala's funeral and I cried as I walked beside his, behind his coffin because I could see that his soul was wrapped in the talus he had bought 
with his last ten roubles for the groom of the orphan treasurer. You know, we think we're so perceptive. We trust so much in what we see. But the truth is, if we only see with our eyes, we're sometimes mamash blind. Because we can't penetrate to the deepest depths, can we ever see in what kind of prayer shawl other people's souls are wrapped? We need to look at each other in a different way, not only with our eyes, but also with our hearts. And most of all, we have to remember, no matter how wise we think we are, we never know.